Today we have an artist talk with Steve Shaw. My name is Monty Luke, the curator of public programs. Uh, Steve is presenting his work within our Detroit City series. Detroit City is comprised of three concurrent series. Detroit Affinities, which is exhibition. Detroit Speaks, which is education. And Detroit Stages, which is performance. This multi-year research program is one of the most ambitious undertakings to date at MoCAT. Today, Steve will be in conversation with gallerist Timothy Hill of the Hill Gallery located in Birmingham. Steve Shaw's photos evoke the raw emotion and ethos of this city as seen through the eyes of a lifelong photographer and photography enthusiast and native Detroiter. Under the tutelage of Bill Rauhauser, Shaw further refined his perspective and has found inspiration and beauty amidst the grit and grace of a city in collapse. Exhibition programming support is generously provided by the Taubman Foundation. Detroit City funding is provided by the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, Kane Foundation, and Detroit Speaks is sponsored in part by a grant from the Community Foundation of Southeast Michigan. One of the best ways to experience MOCAD is by becoming a member, so please support and join us. See the front desk for details. Uh, upcoming, we have some exciting programs lined up for our community. This coming week, we have performer curator Rosalie Goldberg on Wednesday. Uh, February 10th, we have an artist talk with Chloe Brown, and uh, we have Sundays, every, every Sunday we have brunch, uh, so come through the cafe, some DJ music and some brunch, and now, Steve Shaw. Thank you. Uh, uh, Tim and I um, really met this morning, we went and looked at the work, and um, had a chance to talk about it a little bit, and I guess we're going to continue that conversation now. Um, I have a few images that we're going to um, show on the wall behind me, and uh, I guess we can use those as a reference uh, for some of our conversation. Um, do you have anything? Until this morning, I really didn't know exactly what Steve work was all about, and I'm not sure I completely understand every part of it anyway now, but uh, right away uh, the conversation moved to Bill Rauhauser and his influence, particularly in the black and white photos that Steve uh, is exhibiting here. So I was asking him, uh, and I think he's got a great answer for this, uh, what he was thinking about when he was shooting those particular images which I find very different from the color works uh, that are also included in the exhibit. Um, as I was telling Tim, um, you know, the work, you know, I know that Miss Bill Rauhauser, um, you know, shot a lot in the post-war per period. And, um, you know, it's a time in Detroit that I, you know, I think I would have loved to have been able to shoot um, I was in my early 20s, in the early 80s, and uh, so the work that I shot, you know, it's considered, I think it's a lot different than Rauhauser's work. Um, Bill didn't really shoot, uh, as far as I know, in the 80s, 90s, like the real decline of Detroit, and I don't know what exactly we, you know, because I mean, it just seems like in the 80s, Detroit really um, kind of hit the downward spiral. You know, I don't know if that's globalization, but you know, big industry really began to pull out of the city. In many cases, long before the people did. But um, uh, the work I shot, um, it, you know, it has a different feel than uh, Bill Rauhauser's. I think, again, part of it has to do with the, uh, the downturn in the economy. Um, it, Bill's work is post-war and maybe a, a little more I don't know if it's optimistic, but, and I'm not saying mine is particularly pessimistic, but uh, there's definitely a different feel to it. Yeah. Uh, the first thing that hit me when I started looking at these is how, uh, how formal each image is, the architecture of them, how your, your eye gets moved around in the image and eventually, I mean, this is a perfect example of, of what I think is, is a tremendous photograph. It, it, it captures a time and a place, but the, eventually you end up looking at the expression and his eyes lock with yours. 
And that's a moment where something really interesting on the part of the viewer can happen. And it's, it, it's that space that I'm most interested in when I look at photographs. It, it's what happens in that little area. The rest of it is, um, there's a kind of formality that takes place, but if it jumps to that kind of idea, then you find yourself, you know, kind of engaging in the potential of a narrative or an interaction in something a little larger than the image itself. And it's that largeness, you know, that you can take away and integrate into any other idea that you might have. And I think, you know, th this image is, is a perfect example. I mean, here he's walking, he's moving by, and he, all of a sudden his glance intersects just at that moment with Steve's camera. And, uh, you know, I see that happening over and over again in the other room. I think um, that's the first thing that, that hit me. Um, it, it, this image in particular, um, I did shoot more than one uh, frame of this gentleman. And it was, the funny part is, is uh, I shot this frame and like a second later, uh, he realized that he knew me. And of course he, you know, lightened up and, uh, you know, this kind of street face went away and uh, I shot three or four more images and, you know, by far the one when he didn't recognize me was the better photo than the one where he did. <laughs> but um, I, I think I probably would prefer to shoot him as somebody wary of me than, uh, than uh, happy to see me. <laughs> if that makes any sense. I, yeah. But I do know, I did know the guy. <laughs> it's the magic of the smile, you know, the smile is engaging and, uh, and yet it, it, it adds and it takes away at the same time. But um, this, I was also fascinated with both, both the, the, the move into color, what he's doing with the color images, the scale of them, uh, the intensity of them, but the composition, once again, really stands out right away, and, it's, and the images start to, you know, pull you into an irresistible dialogue, um, and the, the color just heightens the experience, um, for me anyway, that's one of the, and also the, the shape of those photographs is very different than the different sizes that are happening in black and white, so it, it causes your eye to focus on them in a in a more regular way, you know, it's like, it's like you're looking at a, a movie set almost, as it runs across the wall. I am, inter I am influenced by cinema, and I, I don't, I, you know, I wanted, I mean, I, I wouldn't go as far as to say I want my pictures to look like stills from a movie, but, you know, when you have a picture of an individual, uh, sometimes that can uh, play as, like, uh, the beginning of a story. Uh, you see this person, you kind of wonder where they're going, where they went to, went from. So it is kind of like a part of a film, you know, sort of just, you know, life, <laughs> life as a film. But um, could we go to the next image, please? And again, uh, I, uh, I, I'm probably influenced by cinema in ways like even you know, older film noir, um, the stuff I grew up watching as a kid, the RKO films. And um, I think that does find its way into some of the things I shoot. Yeah, I mean, this looks like a still from a movie. Maybe it's the, the B side of Frank Sinatra, you know, the real side, not the, not the imagined one. I mean, here's, a, you know, the, the reflection off the street and this very frozen moment that I think is, uh, once again, a, very powerful the way it focuses you, you into what what you're after, but but I think the movie set idea is pretty uh, accurate. Yeah. And I, and I am always interested in the peripheral information. Yeah. Uh, you know, I want a focal point in, in this image in particular. I mean, sometimes I'm at a place where I want to shoot something, and there's something happening in front of me, and maybe I'm hoping for a few different things to converge. In this case, one person coming forward another person, uh, you know, going away. Um, sometimes it happens in front of me and I shoot it. Sometimes it happens and I don't get it. And, um, but I, I, I'm seeing it happen. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna get a photo. But um, 
in this case, I think I shot two or three frames and, uh, you know, I was pleased when, you know, I see a person approaching two people about to kind of cross each other on the street. And, uh, you know, I pro I'm sure when I shot it, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm good here. So do you have your camera and your code or you, you um, know, when you're... Are you walking around? Or? I mean, I think I've done it long enough where I've been able to be as unobtrusive as I can. Other, but, I, you know, at the same time, I'm shooting openly, yeah. and people do see it happen. And, uh, you know, these days, I think people are a little crazier about that than maybe they even were 20, 30 years ago, you know, about being captured on film. <laughs> but... Um, really? Uh, well, maybe not. Maybe I mean, people are more They're taking photos used to it. of themselves all day long. It's true, time. it's true. <laughs> I would think, I had, finally I, get worn out. With no, that. I've had a guy walk into a place where I was holding my camera and I wasn't using it. He just told me, put the camera away. And I'm like, you know, me, of course. I'm like, you know, hey, it's I, obsolete. Right? I don't have to put my camera, yeah. you know. And so then I'm like on verge of, you know, confrontation over whether or not I'm actually going to listen to this guy and put my camera away. And, uh, but, you know, I wasn't shooting any pictures, but I didn't like the idea that yeah. he, he implied that I could. <laughs> 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 But uh, we go to the next image, please. Yeah, there's so many things going on here that in the last photo that are really terrific. I mean, the parking meters and the, the poles and the electric lines. I mean, it, once again, it just kind of moves your eye all around the image that is terrific. This image um, was across the street from a place where I worked uh, in the early 80s um, on Gratiot near Shane. And I think I'd been into the uh, the store uh, a few times, um, and I noticed they had an old cooler in there shaped like a, a large pop bottle. It was obviously from the 20s or 30s. The place was pretty tore up, the inside of the uh, store, but they had this old cooler, and I had been in there, and I wanted to go back and take pictures specifically of the cooler. And when I went in, the kid was inside. I ended up shooting a picture of him in the cooler, and then I shot a picture of the guy behind the counter, the proprietor of the store, and then as I walked out, the kid followed me, and uh, that led to this particular photo. But um, yeah, I'd gone in to shoot the cooler, ended up shooting a picture of the kid with the cooler, the proprietor, and then this picture on the outside, and uh, this is the picture I preferred of the three. Yeah, it's a, cl it's a classic photo. It um, sort of could be the title of American photography at a particular time in the street. You know, it's a great photograph. I love the way it divides. The, you the can't building. see real well maybe uh, in, in, in this, but it does say, uh, oh, yeah. no hanging out <laughs> right above the kid. And the kid's like, obviously, got a bag of chips. <laughs> so he's hanging out. <laughs> it's great. Um, next image, please. By the way, if anybody has any comments or questions about any of these things, just fire away, you know, from wherever. Wow. Um, this is more recent work. Um, this was shot a few years ago. Again, on Gratiot, not far from where the other picture was taken. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, again, a situation where I probably noticed the people, then noticed the, you know, the mural, and then notice the flag, and I, you know, then it's like, oh God, I gotta, I'm hoping I can get this. And I think I shot two frames, and they're both actually pretty good. And, uh, and again, this is an instance where, you know, the people in the pictures are aware of my presence. And uh, uh, like I said, I, I try to do things in a way that's not too threatening, and I don't think they really, you know, minded one way or the other whether I was taking the photo. And, uh, Although I can never be sure, <laughs> unless I actually engage them afterwards, and I don't often do that. But I, you know, there were no words passed, and I think it was cool. But uh, this is an image I feel pretty strongly about. I like a lot. Yeah, I think this defines everything about what interests me in in photography. Um, this is such a, a, a formal kind of proposition, but it, it's without any real expression on anybody's face, it's so loaded with emotion and narrative and the possibility for yourself to interact with your own ideas. You know, you, you look out and what comes back just continually floods you with uh, 
possibilities within the American experience. It's a great photograph. Uh, particularly, the, you know, get up close to this. Uh, some of the things are lost on the screen here, but um, where is this again? This is it's on Shane, um, east of, say, Mac. Uh, on the, I always get confused with Shane, whether it's west or east or south, but uh, it would be if you're heading out, Shane, it's on the right. And I'm guessing past the, just maybe just past the boulevard? Yeah. Somewhere around the I also like to use the yellow in this, in this picture. It's, it's, it's yeah, I love the color. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, you know, I shot black and white for a long time and then uh, really felt a need to switch to color. Um, not particularly recently, even in the last 10, 15 years. Um, and uh, I'm still kind of trying to uh, kind of figure out exactly what it is one versus the other. Um, I know I thought that if I used color, it would present things in a more contemporary way where the black and white, you know, maybe tend to harken back to, you know, in a nostalgic way. I was hoping maybe the color wouldn't do that quite as much. Although some people feel like, you know, color is more sentimental. So like I say, I'm still kind of working out the difference. Um, yeah. but, but I felt comfortable shooting color now. The color just seems so honest to the period. I can't imagine this not being in color, this, this photograph. I mean, it's, it, um, there's, a, there's a direct connection to the time frame um, that is necessary, you know, for me to get the whole thing that's happening here. Um, so, I, yeah, I like, I like the, what's going on in the, in the color work a lot. Uh, next frame, please. Huh. This is an image I shot on uh, Springwells in the southwest side of Detroit. And uh, again, I, I love all the things that are written. And maybe this is something I even relate to. Uh, you know, I really like Walker Evans. And, and he is, in his images, you see a lot yeah. of signs and a lot of things written. And, and, uh, huh. But, uh, you know, I like everything from his, you know, the guy's shirt to what's written on the uh, cart to, uh, you know, the, uh, the music store in the background. Um, but, you know, and it's, you know, I like the composition, but yeah, this has a lot of things going on that are the kind of image I like to take. Yeah, you were telling me a lot about the music background. You know, we were talking about composition and you said that uh, a lot of your background has been in music, which... I, I mean, I, I, I have played in bands, I play music, I mean, I'm a, probably going to be attracted to those kinds of things. Although, but it's not just re even record stores. Uh, oh. You know, obviously in Detroit, there's, you know, you're going to see liquor stores, you're going to see barber shops, you're going to see, uh, um, you know, maybe some diners, I mean, if you're on the avenues in Detroit. Um, but, uh, yeah, if, if there's a music thing, I might get my interest. <laughs> it's like a diptych. There's telephone poles cutting this thing into two images that sort of talk to each other. It's almost like uh, two separate connections, you know. Next image, please. This is uh, the last yeah. image in the, we have in terms of uh, showing on the wall behind me. But uh, this is an image, and again, I don't know if it, you can see it very well. You know, you'll see it better in the next room, but... Uh, I love this family behind the two people in the front. Um, the guy's wearing like his, you know, union jacket. It's got his local on the, the kid's wearing the solidarity hat. And uh, to me, you know, I look at this and I think, you know, this is like a great Detroit image, you know, a place where organized labor allows, uh, you know, maybe somebody who isn't necessarily a skilled labor to, uh, you know, have a, a decent life, and the guy's out here at the Thanksgiving Day Parade with his family. I mean, that's something that uh, appeals to me. And uh, of course, I like, you know, the, the images in the front as well. But uh, I mean, the parade for me is something that I continue to go to and photograph. Um, I, I've been going since I was a kid, and uh, I still f often find things there that interest me. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I mean, this picture uh, is like on a corner a few blocks from where I live. So, uh, 
it's, uh, you know, for me, just to be able to walk up to the corner on the morning of the parade is, uh, you know, a great opportunity for me just to shoot people in the city. Yeah. Um, the whole union connection in this is uh, a great, it's a great narrative. I mean, when you think about American unions and their history and the development of our our whole society, it's a pretty powerful message. And yet, you know, this presents the natural order of, here's the, the family structure kind of all centered around the idea of solidarity that the, the kid is wearing on his hat suddenly gives, you know, hats a different meaning. And um, years ago, we, we did an exhibition in the gallery with an American self-taught artist named Ralph Fazanella. Ralph grew up in New York and mostly painted images of, of, of people involved in union movements and labor strikes at Coney Island, you know, kind of getting out into the world. But a lot of imagery about how the structure of the union shaped the country. And somehow this, this photo just caps that entire conversation off. In the background, you see the, the band sort of sliding into the back. I mean, it's a, it's a very uh, powerful image. Uh, and also, I think it, it helps locate a certain Detroit history, you know, that you were just talking about. Yeah. Uh, there's kids having such a good time in the front, you know, these <laughs> beads, I mean, it's great. Um, like I said, this is the last image um, that we're gonna show, but okay, I think we're all set. <laughs> thank you. And I wanna thank uh, Tim Hill for accompanying me. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, good day. Yeah,